The Olympic Games will be in London this summer starting July 28th, so we've traveled to Colorado Springs and the U.S. Olympic Training Center to learn more about Olympic-style shooting. Hi, I'm Bill Broussard with the National Shooting Sports Foundation, and I'm here with gold and silver medalist Matt Emmons, mm -hmm. who's going to talk a little bit about men's rifle shooting at the Olympics, and he's going to explain all of those sports to us. Matt, okay. tell us a little bit about uh, men's rifle shooting. You got it. Well, we'll start with air rifle since I'm standing here with my air rifle. Uh, air rifle's done from the standing position only at 10 meters. And the men shoot 60 shots, and that's in an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, included in that time is your sighting period. So at the start, you can take as many sighters and as much time as you want, but it's included in your total time limit. And as I said, we do that from the standing position. We have a special set of jacket and pants that we wear, as well as a special pair of boots. Um, there are also some special underclothes to kind of deaden pulse beat and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, also, some of us wear prescription glasses that are specially designed for rifle shooting. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the rifle now. So this is an air rifle. It's uh, what we call a standard rifle, although it doesn't look standard anymore. Okay. These used to be made out of wood stocks only. Uh, around the turn of the century, around 2000, uh, they started going to aluminum stocks. They're just a little bit better, a little bit more adjustable. And here the butt plate. In small bore, you're allowed to use a hooked butt plate. Unfortunately, in air rifle, you're not allowed to do that because it's technically called a standard rifle. Cheek piece is fully adjustable. You can move it up, down, left, right, side to side, all kinds of things. Uh, here we have the pistol grip, which is also adjustable. Uh, this one, I haven't really customized too much, which is not normal for me. <laughs> um, this one actually feels pretty good, so I kind of left it alone. Usually, I put some epoxy to fit it to my hand. Here we have the trigger. Triggers can be uh, any weight you want in uh, any of the rifle sports, uh, except for 300 meter, which is not shot too much anymore. It's not, not in the Olympic disciplines. This is set about 90 grams, uh, which I don't know what that is in ounces, but it's really light. And then we have an adjustable forend, which I can adjust up and down, and even I can twist it on an axis. Okay. Um, there is a maximum distance that you're allowed to have from the top of the action to the bottom of this, which I believe is 200 millimeters. Mine is uh, almost to the maximum, usually a little bit shorter. And then, of course, the caliber is a 177 air rifle, just like your normal Daisy air rifle or any of those, except this one shoots every shot through the same hole. Let's show people. <laughs> now, we're not looking at this target right. right now. We're looking at this tiny little target right here. Right. And that is the hole that a one. Uh, 177 mm -hmm. caliber Correct. pellet makes. Right. And of course your goal at 10 meters is to hit that 10 ring. That tiny time. that tiny little dot that this shot is barely touching, that's actually not a good shot. Um, but anyways, that's what we shoot from 10 meters. This other target that we have here is our 50 meter target, which are for my next two disciplines, which is men's prone, which is a 22 rifle at 50 meters on that target. Mm -hmm. And then the other event is men's three position, which is 40 shots prone, 40 shots standing, 40 shots kneeling using all the same equipment that I use for air rifle, the same jacket, the same pants, the same boots, uh, the same gloves, and, and all of those things are, are exactly the same. It's just the rifle that's different. Small bore guns are more adjustable. Um, you, you have an, a hooked butt plate. You can pretty much do anything that you want to them that is possible. And I understand that you do. I understand that you are the technician, <laughs> you, know, you are the tinkerer of, uh, of all of your firearms. Well, and, yeah. And, uh, tell, tell me um, uh, why you do that. Well, for me, I've been doing this a long time. I've been competing now for probably about 15 years. And uh, the way the rifle fits me is key. Um, I try to build positions that are natural, but yet structurally correct. So that way I'm using a lot of bone-on-bone -bone support. Mm -hmm. And the key is to get the rifle to fit what your body wants to do naturally. So I'm always trying to find out how can I do it a little bit better? How can I make my hold a little bit better? Make it a little bit easier to shoot the shot, give me more time to shoot the shot, and also do it more efficiently. Uh, when things are just more natural and more easy, of course, when you're nervous, things react better, and you're able to shoot a higher score in general. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty much a tinkerer with my cheek pieces. I cut on them, I put epoxy on them, I do that with my grips. Uh, always trying to figure out what's exactly the right thing. That's, That's just your nature. Yeah, right? it's just the way I do it. Yeah, okay. Well, you know we have a lot of target shooters uh, mm -hmm. out there, and they're, they're you know, just the average shooter who goes to the range maybe a couple times a month or so. Mm -hmm. What are some of the tips that you can uh, maybe provide them to help them become a better shooter and help them hit that 10 ring a little bit more often? Well, the, f the first thing I would always recommend to the average shooter is just shoot as often as you can. That's pri first and foremost. Um, you don't get better at anything unless you do it often. 
And I know, for, at least for me, when I was growing up, I was always out in the backyard shooting my air rifle, um, not as high tech as the one I have now. Um, but I always just enjoyed shooting. I was lucky enough that I had a lot, enough space in my backyard where I could take, you know, soda cans out or, you know, targets a lot of times and just shoot often. I just enjoyed it and there was nothing else to do, so why not? Um, beyond that, one of the things I'm really big on is, is gun maintenance. Hmm. And I, I always tell people that if you have a clean gun, a clean gun's a happy gun. And if your right. gun's happy, it's gonna make it's you, true. it's gonna make you happy. And I've seen a lot of people where they, they kind of get lax on their gun maintenance. And especially for what we do, small bore in particular, sometimes I don't know what it is in the powder residue, but if you leave it dirty for an extended period of time, not only do you get lead buildup, but also there, there's something in there that eats the barrel. And you'll see pitting in the barrel. Uh, also, the powder residue collects, it attracts water. And so especially if you live in a humid environment, that could rust your barrel, it could pit your barrel and completely destroy the accuracy. Now for the accuracy that I'm looking at, that's a little bit different than the average person, but keep your guns clean. They function better, they're not gonna fail on you, and it's just a wise thing to do. So gun maintenance really is just another part of shooting. Exactly, it's part of your job. Well, Matt, I wanna thank you for giving us all of that information, and uh, I and the millions of target shooters across America wanna wish you the best of luck at the London Summer Olympic Games. Thank you. And now that we have these great tips from Matt, go to the shooting range, and if you need to find a place to shoot, Go to wheretoshoot.org and always when you're at the shooting range, remember, firearm safety depends on you.